Bonjour. Je suis Maxime, je viens du Canada. Uh, je suis Suji. Je suis Suji. Et je suis Thaïlandaise. Ou je viens de Thaïlande. I'm from Thailand. <rire> yes. Et aujourd'hui, tout le monde, je vais parler en français. Suji va parler en anglais. Mm -hmm. euh, nous avons une vidéo. Euh, les meilleures nourritures françaises, qu'est-ce que vous devriez manger en France? Ben, euh, Walter World Eat, il make a lot of good videos. Nous, en Thaïlande, nous n'avons pas beaucoup de nourriture française parce que Thaïlande ne s'est pas fait coloniser par la France, contrairement au Vietnam, au Cambodge et au Laos. Quand on voit dans ces pays-là, il y a beaucoup de nourriture française, des boulangeries, des pâtisseries, des croissants, des beignes, etc. En Thaïlande, il n'y a rien parce que on... la Thaïlande ne s'est pas fait coloniser. I'm saying that Thailand did not get colonized by France, so... There's not a lot of good bread and pastry and bakery here compared to Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Do you know what I heard? What do you heard? Um, I don't think it's sensitive, right? Um, about the Vietnam War. There's a guy from like the Vietnamese. He went because like he, he had to work in, in France. And the French people doesn't want to teach Vietnamese people to make bread because they're scared of something. But then the guy <laughs> took the recipe. Um, Like how to make bread back back to Vietnam, and then it's turned out Vietnamese people banh make mi? a really good bread. <laughs> banh mi? I love banh mi. Yeah, maybe that's what you mean. <laughs> okay. Well, so anyway, let's uh, let's react. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, escargot, cheese. Wait, hey, fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, Hungry. and today we're here in Paris, and today we're going to talk about are the most French food. That you can have when you're here in okay. Paris. And I'll be honest, these are like the French staples that you can find all over the country. But if you want to make sure you hit like the most important things, these are it. But I have to warn you, if you're coming oh. to France, every region has their own specialties. Yeah, so if you're going to Normandy, it's going to have some different specialties like the cider that's out there, the oysters. First, if you're going mm. to go to Nice in the south with the different seafoods they have down there. So just want to give a heads up. So this is kind of like your go-to Frenchiest of the French food to have when you're here. And if you're looking for a starter, you can't get more French than escargot. Yes, escargot. snails. Snails. You, you like it, right? Yes, but it's, it's uh, in uh, au Canada, c'est un entrée. C'est avant, it's before the, the main meal. It's uh, an appetizer. It's an entrée. Mm. Et garlic. Oh. You put garlic on top. What uh, sauce, the green one? I don't know, some kind of herb from the sea. Mm. Mais c'est très bon. L'escargot, tu, tu, tu le prends comme ça et tu le trempes dans la sauce euh, garlicky et tu mets ça dans ta bouche. C'est excellent. C'est vraiment bon. C'est pas que... It's not something that people eat in Asia in that format like this. Yeah, but, but we have a lot of snail and yeah. chill, but I think but, escargot is quite expensive. Yeah, and you put cheese on it and things like this, and it's, it's, it's okay. so good. If you have had snails before, they're fantastic. And the thing is, they're just drowned in butter when you're here and you have them. And they'll give you this weird little, like, contraption to hold it because that pan's going to be hot. So you grab it, use a little fork, Please. poke them out, eat them. Mm, kids love them, adults love them, everyone loves them. If you haven't Ooh. had them before, you're going to find them on menus all over Paris. So get that. Another See? good starter, or if you're not really super hungry, you're looking for something just to keep you going until a great dinner at night, is of course French onion soup, or as they call it here, just onion soup, you know, soup à l'oignon. Um, you could have that, and what it is is like... Oui, soup d'oignon. Et vous savez pourquoi c'est bon? Encore une fois, si on a ça au, Canada, au Québec, c'est très populaire. C'est parce que c'est très... Et tu peux mettre de, du fromage, tu peux mettre des oignons, et, et le bouillon, et c'est chaud, et c'est à l'hiver, ça, 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 c'est parfait comme, comme entrée, ou même pour un repas. I say it's good even for lunch because it's so hot and there's cheese on top and the soup can remain hot for long because of the melting cheese that look like lasagna cheese on top. Mm. And it, I like it when it's black like on the picture, when it's really nice cooked. And then you put the perfect, le pain français, et tu trempes le pain dans la soupe et c'est vraiment bon. Oh, yeah, you always love this kind of food. Yeah. You're so French. You, you would like it. You have the, the beef broth with the onions in there, and there's bread and the cheese on top, and oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> But I will tell you, when you get it, be careful, because when you kind of poke it through the cheese and through the bread to get to the soup, it's going to be like boiling hot. So be aware oh, of that. Yes, you're going to get what a I said, hits, okay? Or pour for yourself, because... Yeah, I've lost a few taste buds over the years over being too excited for my my uh, French onion soup, okay? Um, now, another kind of quickie you can get when you're here, and you'll actually see it on the trains, on the SNCF trains as well, is the croque monsieur, which is basically oh. the French um, ham and cheese sandwich, but like grilled ham and cheese sandwich, and it's fantastic. You got bread, ham, cheese, it's like gruyere. It's interesting, par contre. It's like some kind of a ham cheese 
sandwich equivalent, mm. but it's like a croque monsieur. On dit aussi croque madame. Like croissant? No, it's like some kind of a... But it's not like this in Canada. It's more, it's a little bit higher. Ham, cheese, it's like Gruyere over top or Emmental. Like people use different cheeses on it, but it is so good. But you're not really always going to eat it with your hands. You might cut it with a fork and knife sometimes, especially if you get it for kids or on the train. I would recommend that to keep your hands uh, from getting all the greasiness there. But that's a very easy, like Aux typical snack move. thing you're going to see. Oui, now, if you want another really good snack that you might get at a bakery or you might get at a, at a, at a shop or a bistro, Quiche Lorraine, okay? <gasps> this is a ham and cheese quiche, all right? It is. Yeah, this is, uh, see, this oh. is more the fancy stuff that with the little uh, salad, restaurant stuff, a little bit like escargot. It's, 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 it's des choses que tu retrouves dans un restaurant, comme la quiche, des escargots. C'est plus des choses de restaurant, right? Et la quiche, c'est pas quelque chose au Québec. Comme les escargots, c'est quelque chose que tu manges pour une occasion. It's like, il faut que tu aies une raison. C'est pas quelque chose que tu vas, ta mère va faire euh, pour souper. I said... Quiche, je dirais it's on occasion. It's like a special day, like once per day or Saturday, you're going to go to a restaurant or something. Yeah. You know? Well, it look French, good to you? yeah, it's look, it's look really good. I love, it looks like cake for me. Yeah, you would like it because it's buttery, it's easy to cut and everything. It's the most it popular like a pie, quiche, right? It's mm -hmm. the go-to quiche to have when you are here. And you can get it as a slice, you can get a little version of it, you get a whole one, whatever you want. But you'll see that a lot of places, and I do recommend Ooh. you getting it. It's actually one of the foods I require myself to have when I first come here. So when we got here the other day, I went to the bakery and I got myself a croissant and a piece of quiche Lorraine because it is a must when you're here. Quiche and Lorraine. speaking of those croissants, that is another thing you should have. You need to go to a bakery when you're here. And there's three things I recommend getting. One, get a butter croissant. Look. It is better than any crescent roll you had back home. You want to have one of those. Then there's pan au chocolat, which is basically pan a chocolate. chocolate croissant. It is fantastic. You want to have that. And then you just want to grab a baguette. And I know it sounds silly when people say, oh, just grab a baguette and cheese. Uh, vous le savez, j'ai un petit Québec. C'est incroyable. Au Cambodge et au Laos, parce que les noms sont en français, parce qu'il y a beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup de boulangerie française dans ces pays de l'Asie du Sud-Est. Pas en Thaïlande, mais au Vietnam, au Laos, au Cambodge, la qualité est exceptionnelle. Et, et c'est encore mieux qu'au Canada. C'est exceptionnel, la qualité. The quality of the bread in Cambodge, Cambodia, and Laos, in those restaurants that have those kind of uh, cheese and baguette and croissant is exceptional. That's what I'm saying. Well, but I agree. I still remember the flavor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it was really good. Parce que nous avons habité au Cambodge pour un an. Donc, nous avons, euh, à tous les matins, moi, je mangeais de la nourriture... Euh, qui me rappelait la maison, frère dans des petits restos français au Cambodge. Donc, euh... And sit out here on the Seine and are on the river and look at and take in the sights. Really, the baguettes here are that good. The bread yeah. is fantastic here, okay? So grab a baguette and some butter. And honestly, that can be a lunch because it's so good. But if you want to spice up the lunch a little bit, another thing you have to have when you come here are the cheeses. And you'll see the from fromagerie, the, the cheese shops around. And so you can go, it's literally like there'll be a bakery a here dish? and there'll be a cheese shop here and maybe a butcher in between. And you can get your meat, your cheese and your oh, bread all together. And there's tons and tons of great cheeses from all over France. Just pick one that looks good to you oh. or two. Or tu vois, uh, uh, le fromage brie. Et le fromage goat cheese, c'est mes deux préférés. Le fromage mou, comme on voit sur la photo, c'est mon préféré. I said I like soft cheese and uh, smelly cheese, brie cheese. What do you like? I like, I like every cheese that's like uh, smelling milk or butter. Yeah. Actually, because, you know, I not really be able to eat that real cheese too much, that wine. I not really see the difference, but um, I happen to try blue cheese. I don't like it. Blue cheese, euh, du fromage bleu, ça coûte, ça coûte très fort, mais le problème, c'est qu'en Thaïlande, le prix du fromage est trois fois plus cher qu'en France. I said the, the price of cheese in, in Thailand is probably three times more expensive than in France. So it's, uh, pas on peut pas afforder, on peut pas acheter beaucoup de fromage parce que c'est beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup trop cher comparativement à l'Europe et l'Amérique du Nord parce que le fromage est importé, le bon fromage est importé, il coûte vraiment cher. It's imported, it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. For three it, really. and have that, but the cheeses that are here are unbelievable. Okay, now if you're looking for another quick snack when you're going by, I know I'm talking about the bakery stuff a lot, but they're important are tarts. There's tart tantan, which tart. is a like apple tart, but Jocelyn's favorite is the so lemon fancy. tart or tart de citron, uh, which is fantastic. I like pear tarts, so you have a lot of these Ooh. little sweet, you know, cakes you could have. Which it's, are... it's look like cake, but it's like a, a tart, oh. and it's uh, sometimes there's caramel. And you will see the texture. It's like it's like the tart, but it's, a, it's crumble when you touch it, like the side, like a pizza dough. It would crumble. How much? 
It looks so fancy. It <laughs> looks like I don't want to enter that 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 place because I'm gonna pay too much. He's showing. Il montre des choses que tu peux trouver dans un restaurant. C'est c'est pas c'est pas des choses que tu vas faire euh, que ta mère va faire pour souper. He, 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 he's showing uh, touristic stuff that he would eat as a tourist, like when you go to a restaurant or something or a boulangerie. Mm. But it, it, the price depends, really. I think some of them can be expensive, some not. I don't know the price in France. Uh, in Canada, it's not too expensive. It's very wonderful good. or tarts, I should say. And I know if we're talking about sweets and, and nice little easy things to eat, mm. I think one of the ones that's really important, my kids would probably kill me if I did not tell you about it, is just grabbing a crepe on the street, getting a crepe with Nutella oh. inside. It is one of those must haves when you're here in Paris. And you'll see the creperies all over. Oh, you can go inside and you can have the. Ça, nous, le, nous l'avons en Thailand. Il y a beaucoup de restaurants de rue et ils font les crepes. I think uh, we call what? French crepe? Too. Yeah, we call that mm. French crepe. Nous avons, ça au, nous avons ça en Thaïlande, dans la bouffe de rue, c'est une des choses qu'ils font. Et tu mets beaucoup d'ingrédients. Tu mets les ingrédients que tu veux et ils mettent ça dans un cône et tu peux, le, tu peux le manger en marchant. I think you like this, right? I like this, but I don't eat often because there's too many people sell it. Yeah. <laughs> you need to wait in line, but it's, a it's the worth it. One, or you can have a galette, which it's is done a like this. savory one. You can do that as just... well. So there's lots of different options for you, but that is one thing you need to have no matter where you are in Paris or France. Um, if you're looking for more of a sit-down meal kind of thing, uh, you, of course, there's always steak fates, so stay intricate with fries. It sounds silly, but it sounds simple, but it's fantastic. That's always a great go-to. Really great oh. beef here in France and in Paris, okay? Um, another great one is uh, duck, the confit de canard, which is the probably what? the duck. best. It's like slow-roasted duck. Oh, my it's God. It is incredible. Duck. I mean, you have that when you're here. Uh, everything is better with the, you know, everything is better in the world. And then if you're here in Paris... Non, vous savez, ça, ça fait 10 ans que je suis pas au Canada. Depuis ce temps-là, j'habite en Thaïlande, dans le, à la campagne. Nous allons dans des pays voisins comme le Cambodge, la Malaisie, etc. Mais euh, j'ai pas la chance de manger des bons steaks canadiens ou européens parce que ça coûte très cher. Mais euh, un, une bonne cote, ça coûte très cher. C'est, ça va coûter 30 dollars, 40 dollars. Donc, nous autres, on peut pas, on n'a pas l'argent pour ça. Donc euh, nous, un steak, comme vous avez vu sur la photo, un steak comme ça en Thaïlande, ça va coûter 3 4 4 euros, 3 euros. Donc, c'est pas cher, mais la qualité ne sera pas pareille. Mais ils font quand même, c'est exceptionnel ce que les Thaïlandais sont capables de faire en termes de qualité pour 3, 3 ou 4 dollars. I said, it's amazing how good the steak can be in Thailand for like 3, 4 dollars. Because this would be like 20, 30 bucks, you know. Mm. Very expensive compared to here, but they do a good job, I think. Yeah. Mm. It was a great go-to. Really great beef here in France and in Paris, okay. Um, another great one is uh, duck, the confit de canard, mm-hmm. which is I mean, cool. you have that when you're here. <sighs> everything is better with the, you know, everything is better in the world. And then if you're here in Paris, look, France is wine. And when you're here in Paris, you will have the option to buy wines from all over the like country. Wine. You and like so wine? please yep. do that. Enjoy the French wines when you are here. Of course because I like even wine. You're just which wine do you like? I don't know. Oh, you don't know? Mm. You like wine? I don't like wine. I like cider. Cidre. At cafe, having a glass of wine with your croque monsieur or just you know a, a little snack, it is something that just just makes you feel like you're the here in Paris. The hell is that? Okay? So, pizza? So another thing you're gonna see is quite so famous here is foie gras, which is you know goose liver pate basically. And some people like people have very strong feelings about it, but it's something. This is something that we you never have, right? What's this? It's goose liver <gasps> that you put on top of bread. Oh. A little bit like how we do, we use caviar, and but some people are not happy because it's uh, it's cold. You don't mm. cook it; it's cold, and you put it on top of bread. And this is again just like escargot or um, or onion soup. It's an appetizer before the main mm. meal, like just to fill your stomach a little bit. What is that red thing? I have no idea. I thought it was a bean at first. Maybe mm. it's some tomato. I'm not sure. Je sais pas, quoi, la, la chose you rouge, là. Here. Um, I know I've had it multiple times. What you'll get is you'll get the pate and they'll give you some bread. You put it on there, maybe with a little jam or a chutney on it as well. It's it really fantastic. About and there's just the so many great foods you're going to have when you're here. And, mm. and I got to let you know, when you go out to eat in France or in Paris, I mean, there's so many options you have that asking someone where's a good place to eat is like asking what air should I breathe if it's all good. Okay. So you have a lot of options. One thing I will say is if you're going to come to eat in Paris, if you're going to be here on weekends, make sure you make a reservation for dinner because the restaurants mm. book out and restaurants might not have like every 15 minutes sitting. Mais they ça, might be, we have a seven o'clock sitting and a nine o'clock sitting. Okay. So if you have kids, oh, realize that some of the restaurants don't serve at like four o'clock or five o'clock. Their kitchen 
might not be open. That's why some of those snacks oh. I talk about, those are gonna be easier to get oh, during let. the day. So be aware of that. Also, no, when you go to eat in France, it's not about fast. Mais c'est la culture. C'est peut-être pour ça que nous, on n'irait pas en Paris. Nous, M. G et moi, nous allons nous allons très voyager et pouvoir acheter de la bouffe dans la rue, au marché. Il y a quelque chose qu'on peut prendre d'un vendeur et que ça ne va pas nous coûter les yeux de la tête. Hein? Ça ne coûtera pas trop cher. I said that when we travel, we like to go to more like places. You're not going to wait in line 30 minutes for a fancy dinner. You go more in the countryside and you can eat something from a street food vendor that's going to take like five minutes to, to make and it's going to be very good. You know? Yeah, that why like never been able to taste whatever that they said that, oh my God, it's the best in the country, thing like that, because there are too many people who cannot wait. Oui, mais tu n'as pas besoin d'aller dans un restaurant qui, qui, qui est très cher pour avoir de, la, la bonne nourriture. You don't need to go to a fancy place to have the best food. Some of the best food in Thailand are from like street food vendor. Mais la culture en France pour les, les, la nourriture de rue, je ne sais pas si, si, si vous en avez. Hein. Je sais au Canada, si tu veux euh, vendre ta nourriture dans la rue, il te faut un permis, il te faut qu'elle soit dans des endroits spécifiques. Ici en Thaïlande, n'importe qui qui a une maison, qui a un terrain, peut vendre de la nourriture. Euh, avoir un kiosque et vendre de la nourriture. Il n'y a, a pas vraiment de restrictions comparativement au, en Europe et en Amérique du Nord. Donc, c'est une, la culture de la nourriture et, et la possibilité est très différente euh, comparativement à la France. Yes. Et au reste du monde. Quick, which is their version of McDonald's, which is actually awesome. If you're looking for fast food, Quick is great. But Jesus. honestly, you need to have patience when you're here, getting your menu, sitting down, getting your food, getting your water, getting your appetizer and your main course and your desserts that you have to have every course because it's French and you're going to love it. But you have to have patience with it, okay? So be aware of that. And also, I know I say get reservations on the weekend, but if you're here in the summer during tourist season, it actually wouldn't be a bad idea to make reservations during the week as well, okay? So <laughs> I've got a little hungry talking about all this, and it's about one o'clock, so I need to go grab myself maybe some French onion. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? Fried rice. Fried rice? Yeah. Ooh, look good. C'est quoi les ingrédients? Saucisse? What is this? Mm, onion. Euh, des oignons? Sautout. What? Sautout. A Chinese kale. La queue Franc- chinoise? Chinese kale? Oh, the kale. Kale? Mushroom? Champignons? Et ça, c'est quoi? Potato? Patate? Yeah. Minced pork? For um, a minty. What else? Oh, healthy, huh? Ça serait, ça serait pas thalandais sans de la sauce soya, hein? Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Look good. Mm. 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 Oh, les enfants. Mm.